Well, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway just released a disclosure filing showing what stocks and funds they purchased. Now, the surprising thing about this, and this is the latest disclosure, was they did not buy many stocks. What did they buy? Two ETFs tracking the S&P 500, SPY, known as SPY, and VOO, known as VU. They acquired those two exchange-traded funds on behalf of their investors. Now, why do you need to know about this? SPY and VOO and also VFIAX are the three most popular S&P 500 funds. The S&P 500 is a fund that tracks the 500 most successful companies in America. It has delivered a 10% annual return over the last 50, 70 years, actually since 1957, that the S&P 500 began. This has been a tried and true place for people to invest. Every benchmark of what you're trying to beat. Every hedge fund, every investor is trying to beat the S&P 500 fund. Now, Warren Buffett's message was, don't try to beat it, just join it. He famously bet a bunch of hedge fund investors that they could not beat the S&P 500 fund. These were professional Wall Street guys that spent all day trying to beat the market. And you know what? He bet a million dollars and Warren Buffett won. The money actually went to charity. But it's a great testament to show it is very hard to beat the S&P 500 fund. Some people get into analysis paralysis and they can't decide what to do so they don't invest in anything. Now the best advice out there, this is coming from Warren Buffett, from Peter Malouk to Tony Robbins, is just bet on the S&P 500 fund. That's where to put the money when you don't know anything better. Now I'm Matt Sorensen, wealth lawyer, CEO of Directed IRA, where we served over 20,000 investors with their retirement accounts and have 1.7 billion in assets. All right, so let's talk about which S&P 500 fund to buy. Should I buy SPY? Should I buy VOO? Should I buy VFIAX, the mutual fund? When I actually go to buy it and I'm in my brokerage account, which ticker symbol do I put in? Which investment do I click the button and say buy? Okay, so you've decided, all right, I'm buying the S&P 500 fund, not because Matt Sorensen said so, but because I've decided to do it. I'm not your investment advisor, of course. But what I want you to think about is how do I actually do this? That's a common question I get. Matt, I went to go to my brokerage account and I would, what ticker do I put in? Do I put in SPY? Do I put in VOO? Do I put in VFIAX and then hit purchase? Like what do I actually put in to purchase the S&P 500 fund? Now, those are going to be your three choices. SPY, VOO, VFIAX. There are plenty of other options out there, but those are the leading three and there are reasons for it. VFIAX is great for you 401k investors and I'm going to come back in a second and talk about why you should consider that in your 401k as an option. Okay, so let's go over the three things you want to consider when buying an investment fund. First, performance. Obviously, performance matters. When you look at the S&P 500 funds of SPY, VOO, VFIAX, you can see these three all track and have substantially the same performance. You're not going to see much variation because they're trying to do exactly the same thing, tracking and investing in the same 500 companies. The second criteria to think about is fees. Now, these are all very low fee products compared to the rest of the market. SPY is at nine basis points. This is the most expensive of all of them at nine basis points. By the way, the average target date fund that your 401k is invested into, when you said you wanted to invest in moderate risk and you want to retire in 30 years, they threw you into a target date fund. You don't even know the name of it. And you know what? The average fee on target date funds is 50 basis points. It's five times what SPY is. Now, VOO is three basis points, and then VFIAX is only four basis points. By the way, this is 0 0.09, 0 0.03, 0 0.04% of a fee. This is your annual fee, very low compared to the rest of the market and fees you can be charged on mutual funds or other ETFs you can invest in. Now, it's important to know that SPY and VU are ETFs, exchange-traded funds. And one of the unique things about ETFs is the way that those get structured is they have less tax consequences. See, what happens an S&P 500 fund is they always have money coming in and out. They have new investors coming in, people coming out. The S&P 500 fund sometimes changes and how much money is getting allocated and there's a committee that makes these decisions. So there's some buying and selling happening which causes some gains and losses. Now in an ETF, they're able to minimize those just because of structural reasons on how ETFs are structured. In a mutual fund, it is more difficult for them to minimize those tax consequences. So you could have more tax liability coming through a mutual fund than you would an ETF. It is not significant, but on the margins when you're comparing the two, less tax work, less tax administration burden on an ETF. So for individual investors, if I'm using a personal brokerage account, just in my name, I'm not talking about your IRA or 401k, just on an individual basis, you wanna lean to the ETFs because there's less work for you, less tax burden. On the other hand, if you're using 
an IRA or 401k, which by the way, there's $38 trillion in IRAs and 401ks, retirement accounts right now. If you're one of those people investing in the market, it doesn't matter because your IRA or 401k doesn't pay taxes when it's making money. Whether you did a mutual fund that's pushing through some tax liability or whether it's the ETF, it's all neutral. So that, that decision on taxes only matters in terms of personal brokerage accounts. Now, I mentioned earlier VFIX matters to 401k investors. A lot of 401k plans don't let you invest in an ETF. It's not on the menu, or you have to go through some additional process to be able to purchase an ETF. So what a lot of 401k investors do that want to purchase an S&P 500 fund is they buy VFIAX. VFIX is a mutual fund available in almost every 401k plan lineup if offered by Vanguard. And so look for VFIAX if you want to buy an S&P 500 fund using your 401k plan. Now, some of you might be, Matt, I don't want to just get a 10% annual rate of return. That's the annual rate of return of an S&P 500 fund over the last 70 years that they've been around. And you're like, I want to do 15. I want to do 12. I want to do 20%. I want to do greater than that. I get it. That's what our clients are doing every day at Directinary. They're trying to beat the market, but don't do nothing and invest in nothing. The S&P 500 funds are a great default place to invest your money. That's what I do with my own money when I don't have it invested in an active project or investment that I know is ready to go. I will put it on the sidelines, but not in a cash account. I don't want a 5% rate of return at the bank, which interest rates are high now, which is rare. I'd rather be in the market for the long haul, having that money invested and then pulling on it when I need it to do better than a 10% annual rate of return. That is the S&P 500 fund. Consider it as an investment option. This is not meant to be financial advice. I'm not your investment advisor. Seek one if you need to know, but if you wanted to invest in S&P 500, fund. These are the three I would look at. SPY, VOO, VFIAX. And I hope the details here help you decide which one to invest in in your situation. Remember, VFIAX for you 401k investors and probably VU, I would say, for anyone else, whether you're a personal brokerage account or even investing in your IRA, you could look for VU because it has the same performance, low tax administration, and the lowest fees. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'm gonna be back with more tips about building wealth, using retirement accounts, saving taxes, protecting your assets, building wealth through business ownership and real estate. And also we have a private Facebook group, Team Wealth Building with Matt Sorensen, other like-minded investors, building wealth together, sharing tips and strategies. Get over and join that group. We will see you back next time.